what, you would know. you say that you came near you know passing on um yeah i think i suppose looking back on it now there was i mean i remember saying to someone that if if i had died uh it wouldn't have been a painful experience because i didn't i didn't feel pain hi my name is doreen and you're so welcome to my channel now, in the last few years, especially since the onset of the pandemic, so many of us have experienced various life challenges. But I think it's so important to remember at any stage you might be in life that whatever you find yourself experiencing, someone somewhere is experiencing something similar or perhaps far worse than you might be going through. Now, I for one draw much inspiration from hearing the stories of people who have surmounted significant life challenges and gone on to become an inspiration to other people. It reminds me that whatever I might find myself going through along life's journey, I too can pull through. Now, in this video, I hear the story of Ross Delmat, who is actually a Baptist minister, and Ross suffered a near fatal motor accident some years ago and i had the privilege of hearing his story which i hope will inspire you too as you watch this video so i'm the senior yeah. pastor of scf yes and right. i've been here since 2014 um as right. a pastor yeah right okay yep. and then in 2016 uh to be precise on the 8th of april yes what happened? Uh, so I I'd, uh, wanted a motorbike for many years. My dad had one, friends had them. Um, and so I decided to get a, a trike, essentially a three-wheeled motorbike, um, and uh, decided that actually I needed something to help me detach from ministry, just uh, you know, to give me some space, some time, just to go out uh, for me, for a ride, to sort of help clear the head and to enjoy things. I'm a bit of a petrol head, it has to be said. You'll probably see... <laughs> It's a racing car <laughs> behind me. Um, so, right. Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to do that. And I bought this trike uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was really, uh, I felt a provision from God uh, to, to go out and, and, and enjoy uh, life away from the, the desk and away from the pressures of no, ministry. Why not? Why not? <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, it all went, all went kind of wrong, really. I'd, 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 I'd ridden out on it um, without my helmet on, interestingly, because you don't have to have a helmet by law to ride a trike. Uh, or at least you didn't at the right. time. Um, mm. And then just before I finished my uh, ride, I went back, put my helmet on um, to see what it felt like riding with a helmet. Um, and uh, it was sort of as I was riding back after that bit of the ride, riding back home um, to where I kept my trike, that uh, we don't exactly know what happened, but somehow I lost control of it um, and uh, essentially went the wrong way across the road, mounted the curb, tipped the trike up, and in the process, uh, hit my head. We don't know what on what. Uh, that's what we don't know. But I do know I had a fractured bone in my cheek, um, and I also my leg took full force of the impact on a metal post, uh, speed sign post that was uh, on, on the verge. Um, and so I, I kind of woke up um, or came to, I should say, because I was knocked out. I came to lost yeah. con consciousness, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. You mentioned that was because of the fear that gripped you. I think so, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I don't know exactly when it was, but I, I remember that feeling terrified as as I realised things were rapidly going out of control. But I don't actually remember mounting the curb. I don't remember hitting anything. So whether I was conscious at that point and then it was the being stunned from hitting my head that knocked that bit out of my mind or whether that's the grace of God that we don't remember that traumatic mm -hmm. bit, I don't know. Um, but I remember coming to, I remember lying on my left side. The trike was kind of on top of me my right leg was wedged on the left hand side of the trike um, and I, I could hear sort of like a trickling noise which I assumed was petrol escaping from the trike um, at the time turned out it was uh, me I damaged my legs I what I basically done was I'd um, my jeans the impact had ripped my jeans open shattered my uh, lower leg I mean just ripped it apart um, and my knee and twisted my ankle so it was a, it was a real mess uh, and I was bleeding out quite heavily um, and actually down the drain I'd landed on top of a drain um, so uh, that was fortuitous for the road cleaners but not so good for the air ambulance who <laughs> needed to give me blood and see how much I'd lost um, so yeah so that so that it's uh, great I, you can laugh at it now Ross it's difficult listening honestly 
yeah no it was it, yeah. yeah i i do look at it now and i <clears throat> i mean obviously all the emergency services attended um and uh, they did what they could uh, someone put a tourniquet on my leg um but they told me that i'd basically have to be flown to uh, the john radcliffe hospital in mm. oxford which is a major trauma unit and yeah. so by the time the air ambulance arrived uh, i pretty much had lost consciousness really blood pressure was obviously very low um and and in trauma often I, I just wanted to go to sleep that was a thing but that everyone was trying to keep me awake for obvious reasons and at but, that stage when you feel like going to sleep it's not a good thing is it no well it was for me i felt quite peaceful i just want to go have yes. a dose you know but yes. but i hadn't seen what that, i'd done that I, might I, have been one long sleep it may have been it may have, yeah i never saw my injury that's the miraculous thing i never saw the injury um but someone someone had stopped uh called my wife and my daughter um who were playing at the park just up the road from where i was my daughter was eight years old at the time she didn't see the injury but she did see me lying on the road um and so obviously for her that was um quite traumatic uh, not Indeed. to mention for my wife who still can't get the image out of her head of of the, the mess that my leg was um and so, so yes yeah, so like, yes so an I, impact I, I, on the whole family basically it did yeah ultimately ultimately yeah it did have a you know we one of our um one of our uh, church leadership team joy phoned them and they went and to our house and sort of woke up my sons who were still in bed and just sort of said look there's been this accident um they were brought up to a friend's house um Karis was taken to this friend's house by a, an old pastor friend of ours so there was a huge amount going on but what other people were doing for me i was just you know lying on the road really um but they gave me um the the, uh, the air ambulance gave me ketamine which is a, a strong uh, uh drug that induces analgesia and you know and basically knocks you out or it did me um but it put me into this kind of horrendous uh hallucination uh which can happen um and that was quite a what strange. were you thinking what was going through your mind at, at this time bros i i can't even imagine can you share could you think um yeah, well, yeah, I, I I don't remember them telling me they were going to give me ketamine. So I, by that point, I don't remember. But I remember I remember actually, I guess, going to or sleeping as I thought it was. But it was like a, a very vivid dream. And I remember feeling trapped in this dream. It was it was sort of almost like floating on this tunnel and I could feel myself moving. But it was a, a bizarre tunnel of kind of that years ago. The only way I describe it years ago, there were the children's toys like a kaleidoscope, a tube filled with glitter and you used to put it to your eye and turn it. And, and the patterns would change. It was a bit like that, but in a more sort of nightmarish kind of way. It's very hard to describe. Mm -hmm. um, and it turned out with well, the movement I was feeling was me being lifted off the trike, off the road, into the ambulance and then driven around to the air ambulance and transferred to the to the aircraft. So had your family arrived by this point? Yeah, oh yeah, Joy been there. Joy been there. Yeah, Joy been there for all of it. Um, what, the, your, that was your wife. Joy is your wife, right? Joy's my wife. Sorry, yes. And where yes. was your eight-year-old? Uh, Karis. She was uh, by that time. She a friend had taken her to another friend's house, uh, who lived just down the road from where. But she was aware of what what was happening. Yes. Oh yeah, she was. She yeah, she didn't know. Because she had seen you lying there. She'd seen me lying there, but she hadn't seen. The, she didn't know the severity of it. She just thought I'd fallen right. off. Right. She didn't see the the actual injury to no, protect no. her, isn't it? Yeah. No, she didn't. I mean, the, a couple of the people who'd found me sort of called to Joy as Joy was coming up the road and said, "Don't, yeah. don't let your daughter come close." Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I, honestly, um, Ross, for me listening to this, it's it's difficult enough. I I can only imagine, you know, the emotions that you were going through at that time. Yeah. What were you feeling at that time? Were you afraid? Did you feel guilty? What what, what was going through your mind? Um, so I, bizarrely, I felt quite peaceful about the whole thing. That's the amazing thing. Um, mm -hmm. As I went through it, the only time I felt fearful was uh, in, in that hallucination. But apart from that, um, I felt quite peaceful. Um, what were you afraid of in that hallucination? I, that I couldn't get out. That this it was sort of I was trapped in this in this world as I could understand it, you know, and that I, mm. there was no way out, and I couldn't mm. get to anyone. I couldn't say anything to anyone. Um, yeah, it was a feeling of being trapped. But obviously, thankfully, that that passed. But it it, yeah. uh, it took. It felt like a long time. Um, it probably wasn't mm. that long. But of course, like dreams mm. that we have when we're just normally sleeping, you know, they're fleeting moments, even though we think they last all, all night. So. 
so yeah it was a definitely a feeling of, of peace um one, you would know. you say that you came near you know passing on um yeah i think i suppose looking back on it now there was i mean i remember saying to someone that if if i had died uh it wouldn't have been a painful experience because i didn't i didn't feel pain considering that the damage i'd done to the injury your body if it's severe enough shuts off mm -hmm. the, that feeling so it would have been just like <clears throat> just like going to sleep and you know had i died waking up in heaven mm -hmm. that would that would have been it so yeah it certainly wouldn't have been a painful death by any means it would be quite a peaceful thing really um but i know some for some people it, it's far more traumatic and painful but mm -hmm. so that's just my experience yeah i honestly ross i again thank you so much for sharing this with me right. you know it's um it's not the easiest thing to have to recall but i hope you can understand that it's for a good purpose oh yeah um you went to hospital yep. from then okay. yeah and then you came round. um yes. and then what did they decide to do um by way of treating you mm. Once yes. you were elevated to hospital, so yeah. So once we, uh, I, I remember coming to in the helicopters we were flying momentarily, and then I remember coming to uh, in the accident and emergency department, and mm -hmm. I remember them sort of, they remember they telling me where I was, although I knew where I was, and the last thing I remember hearing them say is that we need to need to scan and do it, send you off for a scan, obviously to see what mm -hmm. injuries I sustained, other than yes. my leg. And that's all I remember then until, and that was probably around two o'clock in the afternoon. And that's all I remember really until probably around 11 o'clock at night when I woke up for a few minutes, Joy was there, a friend was there who brought Joy over to the hospital. Um, but I was only there and, and I remember seeing like a metal cage that was around my leg and the top of the metal cage sticking out from the sheets. They'd, they'd attempted to rebuild my leg basically over a, quite a few hours of surgery. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had this fixator frame around me. So that's that's all I really remembered, apart from saying hi to Joy and in in a sort of sleepy dazed state. And, and that was this all happened on a Friday. Um, and then the next thing I remember was on the uh, Saturday morning being woken up, and there was a team of medics around the um, my bed, and they basically said to me, "Look, you know, you've you've gone into multi organ failure. We've got to cut your leg off." Did your leg? Why was that? What was the leg beginning to do? I think the leg was, I think probably infection had set in, the leg was beginning to die. They didn't call it sepsis. I don't think it was sepsis, but I think it was just the, you know, the, the in, injuries I'd sustained were so great that even though they tried to save the leg, uh, mm -hmm. it just, it wasn't salvageable in the end. Um, and so it was obviously dying and therefore poisoning my system. So my kidneys had shut down. Um, I mean, I, ha I had have polycystic kidney disease anyway um so the kidneys shut down but they they took me back to surgery and when i woke up about three o'clock in the afternoon i was uh, my, my organs had bounced back they were still monitoring them but i then had no leg um on my right side they, they'd basically taken it off through the knee um joint so that just to, as emergency so that was saturday um right. and they said you'd ha i'd have to have a third surgery on the tuesday uh, following to remove more of the leg in readiness for my prosthetic leg. So that was three operations in about four or five days and major operations. Um, mm. uh, and so that first week in hospital, I remember very little. I mean, Joy visited me, one or two others visited. Our kids came to see me on the Sunday when I was hooked up to all kinds of machines and drips. My sister came and didn't recognize me. I'd all kind of swollen up. And so I was, yeah, I was right by the nurse's station. I'd narrowly avoided intensive care unit. Um, but I was being monitored closely by the, the trauma care team. Um, and so the first week, yeah, very, very little remembered. I remember them, they'd have to change the sheets every morning because they do that in hospital routinely. And that was painful because I was being moved. Um, and so, you know, all the, the where they cut the leg off and the stitches and everything were pulling. So I, and apparently I don't react well to anaesthetic. I get, uh, I get uh -huh. quite, quite um agitated and angry and nasty so my my wife had to apologize <laughs> yeah. were you a little really? bit pulled out to all of them with some yeah. very colorful words <laughs> yeah less than, less than generous but the second week the second week i was far more lucid um and although i was still resting and very tired um mm. obviously i saw now that i i my leg had gone um obviously the stump that was left was heavily bandaged uh, for healing purposes, but I, I began a bit of physiotherapy, 
uh, had more visitors, uh, was eating again. I didn't eat for a week. So, um, and I obviously muscle. Did you atrophy. not eat or you were asked to be nil by mouth? No, I just Which... didn't eat. I didn't eat. I, I joy tried to feed me, I think it was yogurt or something or soup, but I didn't, you know, I, I, I say I remember very, very little. I ate very little. I lost a lot of weight. Um, my left leg had uh, muscle atrophy because I didn't use it for a week. So it's amazing how quick your muscles lose strength when you don't Indeed. use it. Indeed. And can I ask you, um, Ross, how was Joy coping in all of this? Yeah. Uh, you know, she was remarkable, really. Uh, she came to see me every day um, at Milton Keynes to Oxford. John Radcliffe Hospital is about an hour journey each way. Yeah. So she did that every day for two weeks. Um, she, obviously, she, she was basically having to take over and suddenly, you know, make all the decisions, uh, making sure our kids were OK. It was at the end of the Easter holidays, so they did go back to school, but she obviously had to tell the school what was going on. The schools were great. Um, she was sorting out, sort of selling my car because I couldn't use it anymore. Um, she was get contacting the insurance company from the, the trike and getting advice and help from that. Mm -hmm. She was getting the house readjusted, ready for when I came home. So there was a huge amount of stuff to do. Um, and yeah, she was just she was just amazing, really. I mean, she, yeah. she lived with disability. Her dad and her brother, right, our uncle, right. are disabled. So she understood disability. But of course, she yeah, married. But nothing can prepare you for your husband no. becoming disabled overnight, literally. No. I no. mean, Ross, this is just so much to take in. And hmm. let me thank you again for sharing this with me. Within you know the space of one week, you had gone from a very yeah. happy, active you know, Baptist minister, um, life was yeah. good. You were inspiring people. People were looking up to you. You were mm -hmm. having some fun on your shiny new trike, you mm -hmm. know, you know, to losing a leg and literally coming within, I don't know, seconds, if you like, of, of death. Yeah. From what yeah. you've described, you were literally between two wells. If what I've heard about, you know, passing on is anything to go by. Yes. Did, I mean, did you, at that point, did you have any questions for God? Did you question yeah. God? Why Why has this happened? Yeah, uh, yeah I, certainly the why has it happened? And and why didn't God, you know, considering God's almighty power... He sees everything, creation, right? Indeed. That's it. Yeah, why, why, why yes. didn't he, I don't know supernaturally nudge the trike out of the way why did he allow That's it to it. happen no. yes. those kind of questions but it was yeah. i was never i was never angry at god i was more frustrated and angry with myself actually but i wasn't i was never angry with god it was just that question okay you know why um and the question at the time i thought you know and, and just uh, and a few weeks months afterwards was well why didn't i die mm -hmm. when i was looking at life and thinking it's never going to be the same again because yes. you always think the worst is it because it's you know nothing prepares you for this i remember thinking it'd just been easier if i died because then i wouldn't have been you know a burden to join the family um and and it would just it would have just been simpler um mm -hmm. uh for me so those are the kind Did of your feelings. faith waver no at that time no. at any point no it didn't in fact it actually why not I, god had taken away your leg you know he had yeah. taken your fun time away from you he yeah. had, you know, rearranged your, your entire future and all that. Yeah, he had. And your faith in him did not waver. No, because I because I think, you know, A, accidents happen. This is the bottom line. God doesn't stop everything bad happening, you know, there, but there is a plan and a purpose in, in what happens. And I don't think God didn't didn't uh, allow it to happen in the sense that he didn't say right i'm gonna i'm gonna make ross fall off his trike it wasn't it wasn't like that but i think god uses the situations and accidents we find ourselves in if we allow him to um to a bring glory to him to teach yeah. other people and to teach us some incredible things about his provision and his strength so no i never i never doubted my faith i always knew and still know that god is good um, there are I, there are times I go sort of God, you know what you're doing here, you know why are you allowing such, this, that, or the other? But you know, no, God is good, um, and I believe that to the core. Yeah, and you get this from your faith, basically yes. in God, that Christian faith. Yeah. So how do you believe that God has used this experience um, to His glory, and um, ultimately for your good as well? Because that's what the good book tells us that all mm -hmm. things work together 
for those who love God and live according to his purpose, which clearly you're doing to date as we speak. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's developed my faith. It's developed the faith of my family. Um, the, the church have obviously seen the way I've coped with this and processed it. Well, many, many people have seen that. It's given opportunities to speak. I mean, obviously this is one of them, but I've, I, uh, on uh, last, Thursday last week, I was speaking at the International Aviation Chaplaincy Conference about this story um, right. and to other churches uh, about it. The plan was to write a book that's not materialized yet, but uh, it's- It will, I'm sure, <laughs> before long. <laughs> But the biggest, I think the biggest way I found it helped is that I've I volunteered to be the chaplain to the Thames Valley Air Ambulance, the people who flew. Ah, me. who airlifted you to hospital. Isn't yeah. that just amazing? Yeah. And a good opportunity for winning souls as well. Yeah, it is. It's, it's you know, chaplaincy is very much just about being present. But I think people know my journey. I mean, I met, I've met my the paramedic and the doctor who attended me that day. So, we, you know, we're, oh. we're good friends. Yes, um, but it, it gives an opportunity just to, uh, to, you know, to be part of that. And these relationships are built. I mean, one of the there's a couple who uh, uh, work at Thames Valley Air Ambulance who have asked mm. me to marry them next year. So, it, you know, the relationship, oh, wonderful. Built, the joy has been incredible. Yes. To see. Um, yes. Yeah. So, and there's know. been so much blessing out of this seeming misfortune. And yeah. I totally believe what you say that God uses all sorts of situations yes. um, to his glory. Yes. And we wouldn't have been speaking today had that not happened. And yes. my dear friend watching would not have the benefit of being inspired by this story. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely believe that. Um, <laughs> Ross, this is also good to hear, but I also know that um, you're human. You mm -hmm. know, you've got a strong faith in an immortal, all-powerful, almighty God and all of that. Yeah. But you're human and you live with the support and carry on with the faith of almighty God. Yes. Are there those moments when you alluded to this earlier, but I'd like you to um, touch on that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Are there those moments when you feel that actually this is a bit too much? You know, you see your dear wife, Joy, you know, probably I imagine having to take on much more than she did before. Again, mm -hmm. you touched on this earlier. To a large extent, I believe that, you know, life is carrying on well and all of that. But I know that you have some treatments still that you're undergoing. Perhaps you can tell me a bit more about those treatments. And also, um, this is a double question I'm asking you here, but, and also, are there moments where you feel this is a bit too much? God, can I come home now, please? Yeah. I don't really want to be here yeah. anymore. And I, I want to ask you this because I know that there's so many people, again, in the last few years, especially through, you know, since the pandemic, have have struggled with thoughts of this nature. Yes. How do you, do you have such thoughts, first of all, and how do you find the strength mm. to pull through and carry on? Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I, you're right. I still I have treatments and stuff. So as far as the legs concerned, I still have to go for appointments with the prosthesis. Um, I believe you have one today, don't you? Uh, no, next you week. Have... Yeah, right. Next week time. Okay. Um, so, yeah. But, but What's yes, that so, about your kidney? Yeah, so well, so, so since I lost my leg in February 2020, I had a heart attack, um, which was linked. Was this linked? Uh. Linked to my kidney disease, yeah. So that was, it was only a, a mild heart attack, but still required me to have three stents fitted in my heart. Um, and then in April this year, I had a kidney mm -hmm. transplant because of my, my kidneys had, by that time had pretty much packed up. Um, and my wife was my kidney donor. So um, it's been, yeah, so I'm still, I still have blood tests and regular things. I'm part of a, a study that the NHS are doing with my kidney transplant. So, so I still have oh, a right. lot to, to attend um and appointments but yeah i think more recently since i've had my transplant actually and recovered it's almost like my mind has had chance to process some of what's going on and so absolutely there are you know there are very difficult days there are times where i kind of you know only two weeks ago i think i was feeling particularly low and saying to joy you know yeah. i just i kind of i don't want to be here anymore you know i just you know and 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 you know there's there's plenty of ways you can take your life now i'm not saying i would ever do that but it, it i think of you course can... i totally understand how did you pull through that time what gave you strength because 
I think if people are going to be honest, then I think this is the important thing that we all go around pretending everything is fine. Yeah. Everything is not fine. And you know, Ross, I've come to realize that it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. It's part of life for things not to be okay every so often. And God knows that. Yes. And that's why he's there for us. So yes. I really, really appreciate you sharing this with me because it's important for people to recognize that the best of us and the strongest of us go through these thoughts as well. Yes. So what I want to know, which is what the the, the strong, the most stronger of, of, of you do yes. better than the rest of us is how did you pull through at that time? How did you surmount that, that time? And how do you keep doing that? Yeah. Please do tell. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, it's multifaceted really. And, and I'm still kind of working through it. So I, I wouldn't have the definitive answer, but what I would say is that yeah. um, obviously prayer is, is important. Um, and, and asking people to pray. I've got a good friend of mine, good Christian brother who, who, um, yeah. who's been praying for me. Obviously joy has, um, I think spending time with God is important as well because I think one of the things that happens when we're, I mean, when I had my accent, I didn't read my Bible for two or three weeks, partly because I was unconscious for some of it. But I think there's just other things consuming your mind and God carries you in that time. But but when we feel low, I think we can just pull away from everything and including God and actually that is counterproductive. So getting uh, spending a bit of time with God every day is important, but also not, um, not shunning uh, medication. So you know i've been i've been on antidepressants since i lost my leg in fact recently i was trying to reduce the dose which i think is one reason why you know my mind was struggling to process what i've been through you know right. um, medication i think is very important it doesn't it doesn't solve the problem but it gives you the ability to uh, to have some headspace to think through the problem yeah. and change the situation um now i've been on antidepressants for what six years i think so it's, mm. it's quite a while but obviously my brain's not quite ready to deal with it and, mm. and sometimes some people remain on antidepressants you know yeah. but medication shouldn't be and and counseling mm. shouldn't be uh shunned i think there are yes there are some middle eastern perhaps treatments which i would be very mm. suspicious of for christians um mm. but uh antidepressants are, work well uh for me at least um and mm. i think one way god provides you know, yes. Healing. Yes. So. Yes. No, I totally, you know, I agree with that because I believe that God gives us all gifts with which to bless one another. And medicine is definitely one of those gifts given to some people yeah. so that they can support and help us and heal us with in times when we need it. So I think that's you know, absolutely the, the the right thing. I totally agree with that. And thank you for sharing that as well, because you're right. There are some people who believe that medication is wrong, you know, mm -hmm. no blood transfusions and all of that. You'd probably not be here being a blessing to all of us if you had not had blood okay. transfusion. And I think you had quite a bit at the time. Yes. So I, I totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, Ross, I really, again, I, I cannot thank you enough for sharing all of this with me i i'm feeling very inspired and i'm quite sure that anyone watching is feeling sane i pick up on the fact that you say you're um you know trying to overcome mm -hmm. the this the challenges that you know have been presented to you since this incident or, yeah. or event is a work in progress yes i believe that's also a very important thing that you've mentioned because life is a journey and it's a journey in progress. Yes. And all of these experiences, I believe that they are what make our journey and our ability to be able to surmount these challenges and deal with them yeah. and inspire others through doing so is all part of the journey. That is what makes the journey. That really is the reward yeah. of the journey. Yeah. And I, I really thank you for sharing that to let us realize that life is not one big party where you're always happy all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's full of highs and lows. Yeah. And the key is how you get through them, through things like faith, yes. you know. So at this point, I would like you to speak specifically um, a little bit about the importance of uh, faith in, in one's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think faith gives you a framework within which to uh, hang those things that you go through. Um, so for me, with with the Christian faith, there is that 
that there's that um, blessed and sure and certain hope of what we do not see as Paul describes it you know that that even even if my life had come to an end on the road or indeed the next morning when I had multi-organ failure um, or through my heart attack or anything you know I knew I knew where I was going that's the bottom line I wasn't afraid to go I knew I, was, I had that hope um, and and I think it, it just helps you to see that yes, bad things happen, but God will work yeah. purpose through them. We're not just stuck with those bad things, uh, mm -hmm. and we just have to endure them. I think, you, I mean, there are times, of course, when it's not easy, um, but without faith, I'm not sure how mm -hmm. people cope. I mean, for example, when when I was just before I turned 18, my dad died. He was 48 of pan pancreatic cancer, and our neighbour was also dying of a different cancer, but at the same time. And after my dad had died, uh, we visited my our neighbour, um, and she she was lying in the bed downstairs, and she didn't have faith at all, uh, and she wasn't really interested in it. And it it was almost there was a a distinct emptiness and a coldness about mm -hmm. the kind of atmosphere and her. She, I mean, she was a lovely person, but there was just no hope whatsoever in, in that situation. It was so distinct from my dad's situation. You know, I mean, my little sister was still at primary school, so he died young. And it was traumatic for us as a family but there was this hope that okay he's gone but we will see him again and that sustained us over the years yeah. um, and i think i i honestly don't know how people without faith cope i mean i suppose you could say they sometimes they turn to drink or, or drugs or other addictions or they just constantly can't get out of that place of pain and bitterness and loss which mm -hmm. in one sense is understandable so faith just gives you that's the best way i can describe it it gives you a framework upon which to hang things yes you know that god is god is bigger than anything that happens he's got you yes would you say then that faith is crucial to um mind wellness mental well-being even and also things like inner strength and and serenity of mind would you say that faith plays you know to or to what extent would you say that faith plays a role in attaining um that state of mind or living Mm. I mean, uh, for me, I think faith is 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 massive. It's significant. Um, I mean, years ago, this this country was known as a Christian country, and and faith was a big thing for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, across the world as well, um, it's becoming less so now. Well, in one sense, the Christian faith is becoming less so now, and people have faith in a variety of things. And that you know that in one sense, that's fine. That's where they find comfort. But I find that that a lot of the, the Christian faith just gives me the strength to keep going, to carry on, to know that God's got me. And it's an ass assurance that I think is different from other faiths that people will follow or other things that people will mm -hmm. put faith in, um, which which ultimately never satisfy. And so you keep having to go back and go back and go back. You know, only if faith in Jesus Christ, as, as I understand it, only faith in Jesus Christ has that fulfillment in such a way that you just... You know, even in your darkest times, even when you can't call upon him or rely upon him or you're literally unconscious and unable to do anything for yourself, God is still there and still yeah. powerful and still working. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, so or, would, yeah. would you say that when you're a person of faith, I think that we probably alluded to this earlier on, but would you say that just because you're a person of faith, bad things will never happen to you? No, no. I mean, I think, you know, when we're a person of faith, bad things happen. And sometimes bad things will happen more so. I mean, you think of uh, Christians across the world who lose their life for their faith. They've not done anything wrong. No accidents. Mm -hmm. People, you know. Many of Jesus's disciples suffered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Similar fate. Mm. Yeah. They all met gruesome ends apart from one. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. No, I think, uh, you know, but so being being a Christian, a, a follower of Jesus doesn't mean that suddenly life is going to be all peachy and rosy. Yeah. It also doesn't mean, I hasten to add, that God will always heal you uh, of everything. And that's a big thing that I think in some sectors of the Christian world, people sort of claim yeah. if you're not healed, it's a lack of faith. With respect, that's rubbish. Uh, mm -hmm. I think God clearly works through our weaknesses. And actually, mm -hmm. as I said recently to someone and to my church, when we go through painful times, so often we say to God, you know, get me out of this painful time, take away this mm. trauma, this loss, those feelings, and that's understandable. But I think we need to change the dialogue and say to God, actually, yeah. how how do you want to use this? What do you want to teach me? And how Indeed. do you want to use this to glorify you? By doing that, mm. it takes the focus off us and the situation mm. and puts it onto God. And that's easy mm. to say and hard to do at times. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's worth <laughs> doing, I think. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I totally, again, agree with all of that, you know, and thank you so much for, um, you know, emphasizing that. Rose, I think this all leads me to um, one major question that I've got for you. Um, I think it's something I, you know, kind of thought about and struggled with for a very long time. I believe that many people, especially in these times, mm. are struggling with too. And it is that, what would you say that life's purpose is? <laughs> That's a good question. Life's purpose. <laughs> I think I think life's purpose is ultimately to to come to know Jesus as Savior, and to and to live out the plan and purposes He has for us. That's that's the ultimate fulfillment, the ultimate happiness, and the ultimate joy. Um, is is that faith in in Jesus Christ and and doing what He's called us to do? Um, you know, we were we were all created. The Bible tells us all created in His image. We all have something of God. Uh, in us, uh, partly in just the way you know we look as we were created, but also you see that when trauma occurs. I remember when yeah. when nine eleven happened, the churches in America were full because everyone was reaching out and saying there's got to be something. Same with COVID as well, although we couldn't go to the church. But people yeah. are asking those questions <laughs> of faith. There must be a bigger purpose. So even people who are not Christians or not got faith, when pushed to the limit, will yeah. will start to ask those questions because that's naturally part of us. So yeah. that we were created to have that relationship with god and therefore that is the ultimate purpose if you like of life and to honor god mm. and to worship god through our life mm. um and a lot of people obviously haven't yet discovered that or don't want to discover that but for me mm. uh that is the ultimate ultimate purpose mm. i i absolutely agree and if i were to ask you if you can I know what I think, but if I were to ask you if you can see this purpose in your own life, mm. you know, played out in your own life, what would your thoughts be? Despite the challenges and all of that, would you say you can see this life purpose you've just detailed in your own life? Yeah, very much so. Uh, I, you know, I look back at the the journey that my life's taken uh, yes. in terms of certainly ministry. I, I I was in architecture before ministry, but um, oh, right. the way that I've worked through and the things I've seen, the people I've encountered, the lives I've touched and the lives that have touched me, uh, mm. very much it's been about that purpose and that fulfillment. Yeah. Um, and mm. doing what God's called you to do, believe me, is not always easy. As we highlighted the disciples, uh, all of them but one met a gruesome death, you know, so it's not yes. always an easy journey, but it's the most fulfilling yeah. journey. Um, so, yeah, if that answers mm. that question. Yes. Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree. And like I mentioned earlier, there's no way I would have been I would have been having this conversation with you had mm. it not been for what had happened. And I, w yeah. I mean, would you would you agree if if I said that I personally from the story I thought I knew your story, but you've shared much more with me today, mm. and I can't help thinking that this unfortunate event, or so it seems. Mm -hmm is very much part of God's plan for your particular life because yeah. you become more impactful and a major source of inspiration for so many people than you would have been if this hadn't happened, as difficult as it is. Yes. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, God has, God has used it in in, in incredible mm. ways. Mm. Reach out to a lot of people. Um, mm. And, it, and it's, it's, it's been mind-blowing, really. And it's... Yeah it's it's just something i i'm just happy to share you know i think it's yes. it's easy when you there's a sense in which you become sort of famous in inverted commas because everyone knows <laughs> people have heard you but i just for me i don't i don't look at it as like that you know i think mm. whatever whatever god can bring out of this for him then mm. it's great you know and sure yes. good and i enjoy doing things like this and other things but yes ultimately <clears throat> it's about what god's doing and the thing is god yes. god shows us before the bible says before mm. the world beginning of the world you know he knew mm. what was going to happen in the days of my life and the, all the other things i've encountered he knew that and he's already prepared the plan to work through those things that's the amazing yes. thing it's not yeah. he's not reactive he's proactive um yeah. so yeah whatever happens you know mm. god's got it covered indeed yeah. you know that uh verse in the bible that says um 
our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways yeah. you know and i can absolutely see that it you know we hear these things but when we see testament through stories of people like you then mm-hmm. it makes it all so real and i i couldn't be more grateful to you ross that you have uh, you know um honored my invitation today shared this very very inspirational story with me and um, there's so much i'm going to take away from it i'm going to draw so much strength from it and um i i just pray for more of god's blessing for you mm-hmm. i believe that he has a, a special plan for your life all to the glory and honor of his holy name yeah. i'm clearly being you know one of the recipients of of this blessing and so will anybody who will watch this video and for that i really really thank god for your life and um like you said and graciously shared i know it's not easy but through the challenges that you're going through and um through your transparency and your humility in sharing them with me today you are going to bless so many people ross and i hope that you will rem- remember this i don't know who is watching this right now i don't know what they're going through but i know that your story will bless many people beyond me hearing it from you today so i yeah. really want to thank you once again rose i couldn't do do that enough i'm sure after this i'll call you and say thank you again <laughs> rose before you leave us i would like you to um share that one piece of advice with my uh, dear friend watching like we said life is a journey and we can never have too much you know advice to help us through the challenges that none of us are um, exempt from no one is immune to these things so yeah. what's your i mean you've shared a lot already but just mm-hmm. that one last one i think i think the key thing when with anything you go through is to be authentic and so yes. if, if you feel like life sucks and you and you're struggling just be authentic <laughs> tell people i like um, that colorful language yeah. <laughs> you human uh, just like all of us <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah, just, yeah just great be yourself. don't don't be what you think people expect you to be or what you think yes. how you should respond allow mm. allow yourself to be you know because the reality is god can see who you are he knows what's going on so yes. if you are open with people people can can help and can respond in a far better way if you pretend everything's fine which of course yeah. well, a, as british people we're very good at and as christians we're oh, like, oh indeed <laughs> i'm having a great time no not really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just authenticity i think is is hugely yes. uh, important uh yes. in in life generally and you know uh, and and certainly when we go through difficulties and challenges indeed and i guess also we did mention about life going being uh, you know full of ups and downs and i always say you know in the good times yeah. we need to remember to be thankful right yes yes and grateful to yes. to god or whatever our faith is yes 100% ross somebody watching might be thinking you know that if they're in england um, anywhere near you they might be thinking i really you know i'm inspired by ross's story mm-hmm. um where can i fellowship with him at his church um i know i mentioned but can you tell me a bit more about where it is um in buckinghamshire yeah so we're yeah. we're in milton keynes we're on the west side of milton keynes uh right next door to a large secondary school um and uh, easy to get to our website is www.scf sierra charlie fox drop hyphen uh mk mike kilo dot org dot uk um right. and then you can you can hear the story that is on there that under name prosthetic pastor which is i was nicknamed um, <laughs> yeah, i i did see that you know i think it's quite a nice name not yeah, that you would have liked yeah. it but you yeah. have it now and it sounds quite cool let's yeah. stick with it <laughs> but, listen, some other names some suggest um, you see <laughs> um, yeah, i'm is, sure <laughs> oh dear i can only imagine <laughs> A lot of our a lot of our services uh, are uh, we live stream so you can see that or you can come and visit us right. uh, make Great. contact through email and and that sort of thing so yeah so wonderful what secondary school is it that it's near so we're right next door to Shenley Brook End secondary. ah right yes right okay oh Ross what um you know absolute 
pleasure and honor speaking with you today. I, I feel truly, truly blessed and inspired. You know, I think that it's good that we pause and share these stories. I think this is the deeper meaning of life, yes. you know, and I, I thank you so much for, for making time to speak with me. I always say that, you know, people are, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made, mm -hmm. but you, Rose, truly are mm -hmm. fearfully, most fearfully and ever so wonderfully made. And again, I thank God for your life. I thank you for the blessing that you are allowing God to use you to be to other people. And may you grow stronger, better, wiser. May God send you to the right places and bring you into contact with the right people who can support you on your health journey so that you stay healthy, you live many more years to come, mm -hmm. that you, know, you shall be a blessing to as many people as God wants you to be, Rose. Thank you so much. It's been it's been an utter privilege and honor speaking with you. And I thank you yet again, Rose. <laughs> All right. So I wish you, you're very welcome, Rose. I wish you a fine rest of day and uh, stay great. And please do stay amazing also. All, day. God bless you. All right. And stay well. All right. God bless you too, Rose. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.